Dilandog is an Italian horror comic, but Dylan himself is an English, a former Scotland Yard policeman and works as a private detective who investigates paranormal events. A long time ago, when I was collecting comic books, I especially remember this cover. If I make this cover realistic, will it be even scarier? This video is sponsored by Squarespace, more about that later. I started with the same aspect ratio that the comic uses and a 35mm camera that I set up a quite low. After that, I created the basic shape of the castle or walls following the reference. We can create a bevel with control B, which is a destructive way, or with a bevel modifier for a non-destructive way, which means that we can later change the value at any time. In order to non-destructively create a bevel on only one edge, it is necessary to change the method from angle to weight. Now, in edit mode we can select edge and add bevel weight from 0 to 100%, which is very useful in this case. For stairs it is enough to create the first step, for the others there is array modifier. Doors and windows can be created with the help of loop cuts, but the boolean modifier gives us much more control. First I modeled something that looks like a castle door, after that I use it as a boolean object. If we add a new object in edit mode, it will be part of the same object in object mode. That way, if we want new holes, I don't have to add a new boolean modifier like we would have to if we did the same in object mode. I duplicated the same object, turned them into a new object that I use this time to create frames. For lighting, I used a slightly orange background and a sunlight. That's not enough to separate the background and put the focus on the lady in black who comes later, so I added an area lamp above the lady and an each on the door and window. Squarespace has everything you need to build, publish and host a fantastic looking website. For a fairly low fee, Squarespace gives you access to a wide range of excellent templates, simple but effective selling tools and an interface that is extremely easy to use. It's a particularly good website builder for showcasing creative projects, creating membership sites or selling online courses. Squarespace's scheduling tools helps you automate everything from payments to reminders. With Squarespace's appointment scheduling tools, you can easily create and manage appointments, track appointments availability and send reminders to appointment participants. These are perfect for businesses such as salons, restaurants or arranging window meetings. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Bulgaria to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Stone covers most of the scene, we can find a lot of free and paid textures on the internet. Before I go online, it is more practical for me to look up what add-ons offer inside Blender. I tried the polygon add-on and found a texture that fits what I need and it's free. 
but since the stone is very important, I wanted to get even more details and real 3D geometry, not just from bump or displacement maps. A few years ago, I made a photo scan of this wall, which has now turned out to be very useful. I combined it with a polygon texture and got a lot more details. But at that time, I didn't just make that photo scan, but a large number of them. Now, I found some time to optimize it and photo scan several new objects and create an asset pack of about 40 assets, which I call Stone City. The asset pack consists mainly of old stone walls, grounds, houses, churches and similar buildings. The asset pack is ready for the asset browser and you can download it on Patreon link or by clicking on the YouTube join link as well as the other assets and tutorials. Stairs in castles are usually not straight, so I added more details using Ctrl R for loop cuts, Ctrl B for bevel, Alt T to extrude along normals, G for grab or R for rotate. The second option is with three loop cuts, numpad minus to subtract the selection, if we switch to individual origin, we can scale each edge individually. With Ctrl Lampet Plus expand the selection again and Ctrl B for bevel. Since we have too much stone, I decide to place planks on the floor. One texture from texture.com, few planks plus array modifier and we have planks. Later we can apply the array modifier and add some imperfections with proportional editing. Here it is useful to switch to connected only, that way we edit one plane at a time. Creating a character that looks realistic in CGI is a hard work. Fortunately, the lady in black is in the background and is covered by a dress, so she won't be visible as much. I go to Mixamo and choose this model in one of the standing poses. Now, I need to create a dress and a scarf on the head. I created the dress using cloth simulation and for the collision model, I model this cylinder. To add the effect on the dress swing on the wind, I use the wind effect under force field.
with cloth brush in scalp mode we can get more details but I didn't use it too much because this is ok for the background. I replaced the head with a skeleton head, it is the same skeleton as the one in front of Dylan. I downloaded it through the Blender Kit add-on. I got a scarf on the head in a similar way. First, I tried to use the head of the skeleton as a collision object, but it didn't work because of the complicated geometry. So I used Ecosphere to make Blender's jobs easier. For the material, I used this free shader from chocofur.com. I just added some transparency to it by playing with the alpha value. Only rare 3D artists can create a realistic model of the human face. I tried looking online for a Dylan dog model, but I got what I expected. That's why I turned to another solution, finding a photo of Dylan dog. If you are a fan of comics, you probably know that Dylan dog character is inspired by British actor Rupert Everett. There are two Dylan dog movies. The newer Dead of Night movie, starring Brando Rout, was not well received by the comic book fans. The second film from 1994, originally titled De la Morte de la Mor or English Cemetery Man, was played by Rupert Everett himself and is based on the novel De la Morte de la Mor by Tiziano Scalvi, who is the original creator of the Dylan Dog comics. Now that I know who Dylan Dog is in reality, it is necessary to find a frame from the film that best matches the one from the reference. Since the image is of a low resolution and a bit blurry, I decided to try the AI image upscaler. I use HitPo and I can say that I was surprised by the result. HitPo allows you to upscale to 800% and the result is so good that I even brought back some of Dylan Dog hairs from the blurry low resolution photo. Hitpov has a browser and desktop application that has more options. Look for the link in the description. I removed the specular and plugged the image to the emission and set the Dylan in place. Since the image is only a plane that does not react to the light, it is necessary to adjust the light in the 3D scene to what we have in the photo in order to fit it. The background in the photo is dark, maybe you didn't know, but the light in Blender can go to a negative value, we can remove the light. In this case that's what I need, I place a negative light behind Dylan to better blend the photo into the scene. We have a lot of light on the right side on the face. I made a hole in the wall to let some light on the wall next to Dylan, now the light on his face make more sense. That's most of what I done in Blender, this is the render directly from Blender and this is after post processing, which I talk more about in the step by step tutorial. You can find the whole tutorial, the project file as well as my other tutorials on Patreon link in the description or by clicking on YouTube join link. You can see a preview of the tutorials on my website. If you have an idea for the next video, a scene from a movie, series, comics or something else, write in the comments. I plan to record 3 videos in December. Please like and subscribe if you like this video.